In this lesson, we'll introduce the concept of a random vector and we'll overview the important ideas of its first and second moments. Well, a random vector is simply a collection of random variables. In some situations, they might correspond to samples of a signal in time or pixels in an image. In other situations, they might describe the physical state of a system, such as the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. Well, in any situation, a complete statistical description would involve the joint density function for all elements of the vector. Frequently, though, we'll be restricted to a more restrictive description of the vector, which might involve the mean or the expected value for the vector, which is a vector of the means for each element. Another important quantity is the second moment for the random vector, which is the expected value for the outer product of the vector with itself. Now this matrix contains the expected values for the product of all possible pairs of the random variables that make up the vector, and the resulting matrix is called the autocorrelation matrix, or sometimes simply the correlation matrix. Here I've used the capital letter R to denote the correlation matrix, and the subscript X denotes that it's the correlation matrix for the random vector X with itself. Now important property of the correlation matrix is that it's symmetric. That is, the matrix is equal to its transpose. Now that should be evident from the definition, but there's another property that is less evident upon first glance. Now to see this property, let's think about a random variable that is obtained by taking the inner product of the random vector with some known vector h. Now this is simply a weighted sum of all the elements of x. Now the square of this new random variable could be written like this, so that the second moment of the new random variable would involve the expected value for the outer product of the random vector with itself, which is the correlation matrix. Now because the second moment for a random variable must be non-negative, this quadratic form for the correlation matrix must also be non-negative for any possible vector h. This means that the correlation matrix must be non-negative definite. That is, the quadratic form with any vector h, h transpose times the correlation matrix times h, must always be greater than or equal to zero. Now those two properties, that the correlation matrix must be symmetric and that it must be non-negative definite, are characteristics that all correlation matrices must possess. Now whereas the correlation matrix is an extension of the concept of the second moment to random vectors, the extension of the concept of variance is called the covariance. And the covariance matrix is defined as the expected value for the outer product of the random vector once we've removed its mean. Now with a little manipulation, it's easy to show that the covariance matrix is equal to the correlation matrix minus the outer product of the mean vector. Now like the correlation matrix, the covariance matrix must be symmetric and non-negative definite. In subsequent lessons, we'll review some of the important ways that we use second moment descriptions, such as the covariance and the correlation matrices for random vectors.